Hello and welcome to my lab. Today we build large oven furnace thing for lab. Let's go look at computer design. And here it is. It's going to be a somewhat industrial furnace. Not exactly sure how hot it's going to get because while I know that I'm going to be putting about three and a half kilowatts of energy into the system, the imperial measurements for insulation and thermal conductivity are kind of screwy and it's very difficult to do the calculations because of that. So we'll just have to build it and see how hot it'll get. There's many uses for a general purpose oven like this. A lot of what I'll use it for will depend on how hot it gets, but I know I will be able to use it for curing powder coats, uh, drying things out with heat, and general scientific use. With this I'm interested in seeing how well we can control the temperature inside using a more than just a PID. I want to model the system involved here and use energy-based calculations to uh, see if we can do a little bit better than uh, the normal oven. If you look at the temperature curve of a normal oven, there's usually this sawtooth going on as the element turns on, heats up the oven way hotter than you want, and then it turns off and it cools way down below where you want it, and it just isn't a great solution uh, if you actually want to control the temperature. I'll be using a form of pulse width management to control the heating element at a much higher frequency than an oven does. But we'll get into the electronics later. Right now, we're going to focus on the actual structure here. So I'm going to fabricate this in two pieces, the top cabinet and the base. Let's start with the base. Here I'm cutting the pieces for the legs. I got most of this metal cheap from a local surplus yard. The amount of this tube that I got was just enough, so I will have to weld some pieces together to make the horizontal bits. I just put them together and use the table and another tube to keep things straight. It takes quite a bit of welding to do this, but that's just fine because a lot of the reason for doing this project is to give me a lot of welding practice. So I'm building this oven partly because I want the welding practice, partly because I know I'm going to want one in the future, partly because I know this is something that we can build with the tools and resources that we have now while we wait for more, and partly to test the new HMI. We should be able to create a really nice interface with graphs and temperature curves, but we'll talk more about that when we come to it. With everything cut, I'll build two of the sides, then bring them together. I meant to tack both of these horizontal pieces, then weld it all up, but I got a bit too enthusiastic and welded up just this side. Thankfully it worked out. Things were close enough that I was able to just use one of the horizontals to push the other tubes apart to the right distance. Now I'll add the casters by welding nuts to these plates that I made.
to make the top of the base, I will need to cut notches into these angle iron pieces. Now that that is done, everything should fit together quite nicely. With the base frame complete, we can work on the base plate. This plate will hold the fire brick below the heating element and the shield above. That is most of the base complete. Now let's work on the cabinet. This will be the door frame. The rest of the enclosure will be sheet metal welded to this frame. I managed to mismeasure the lower part of this frame. It wasn't an important part of the opening though, so I can just fill it in below with a little bit more plate. There we go. Now for the sheet metal. I ordered this from a local sheet metal shop, so all we should have to do is put the sheets together with one million tacks, and then I will come back and finish the welds.
Now for the hinges. We'll have to make mounting brackets for those. To attach them to the sheet metal, I'll push screws through and then weld them. The contracting hot metal will pull everything tight, just like rivets. Then they will be ground flat so that they don't interfere with anything. Now we can tack it on to try the door. Perfect, now we just need to attach the latch. And there we go. There's definitely a couple of finishing pieces that I need to put in still. Just a couple of little brackets and stuff here and there. Uh, the only thing I don't like is this door. It's way too thin and, you know, it's really obvious now, but sometimes it's a little bit difficult to see that when you're designing it in CAD. So I'll probably just add a little bit more material around the edges and that will make it a lot stiffer and then it'll close properly. And the nice thing is, with the hinges the way they are, I can just add uh, a little bit of shim over here and over here, and that'll account for that added width in the door. Um, but it swings nice, so that's cool. Next time we'll be painting everything, uh, putting all the internal components in, and well, we'll see, we'll see how far we get and we'll just uh, keep giving you updates on this. And with all that said, we'll see you next time. Oh, it's warm.